dear people of YouTube. Welcome. We're back with all. Uh, this is going to be a bit of an interesting episode. Uh, we're going to wax philosophically. I feel like people say wax philosophic. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to wax and wane. We're going to chat about philosophy in a way um, because I, I want to focus a little bit. I know we talked a little bit about Diplo last episode, but things are afoot. Asaloon is falling to Yis. Uh, Yis has a good bit of this. He's going over here. The thing is, he has a lot of thugs. And uh, one of the things with Dominion's Enhanced is thugs are cheaper because somebody looked at the game and was like, thugs are too expensive. They're a horrible way to spend gems and vanilla. Let's make their way more options to make them cheaper. And that's what they did. So, the I mean, okay, there's some things. Like, people like thugging in Dominions. It's like one of the things people like doing. Building thug chassis, kidding out commanders. That's a fun thing. So there's more of it. So that's kind of cool. But the flip side is, if you don't think make anything more expensive and you make a lot of things cheaper and you make new options, you're going to make it cheaper. So anyway, yes is blowing up. Um, on the score graph, he's probably like for provinces right up here. But the problem isn't so much provinces, it's income and gym income. His income is like right up, way up here. Like, I, I can't reach guys. It's like 50% more than mine almost, 45. Jim income is about the same, like 40% more. I haven't sight searched any of my water. I may start doing that, but we'll see. I'm not, I'm still not confident we're going to hold it in the long run. But anyway, so this is happening. And the problem, Yis picked this planet because it was rather weak. And because Marverni had a bark skin bless. Oh, God. Um, so he came over here. He messed with Marverni. Then Oceania picked a fight with him. And now he's eaten most of Oceania. I had talked to Relay. I was like, Relay, dude, you have to vulture Oceania literally right now. And so Oceania, uh, Relay went into, like, rapid vulture mode. And Oceania agreed to get vultured because he realized he was dead. And this turn, he has actually death basketed me 75 nature gems, which is pretty awesome. I think he actually had Mother Oak up. Yeah. I think I actually thank him for it. We're going to need it. Um, you guys can't really see it because, I don't know, like, when I'm sharing the game with you, there's some charts and stuff. Maybe we'll pull them up in a future episode. But um, the score graphs are getting publicly broadcast in the channel because somebody has eyes of God. And anyway, we've been looking at it, and Yis is out of control, guys. They're way, way ahead in research, and uh, things are getting worse and worse. The, the problem with this planet is it's very balkanized. It's a, and what that means, basically, is it's, it's been split up into a bunch of factions. Nobody's terribly strong here. And the problem with that is they're fighting this, like, industrial superpower, basically. So he can bully them one at a time, and unless they're extremely co cohesive, which is really hard to do, like hard to be cohesive, because, well, I mean, they don't, like the, the geography, like, while he was attacking Marverni, people couldn't really attack Yis, except Oceania, and Oceania kind of did, but then people were backstabbing Marverni. And some of that, it's like a very fine line, because at some point, you do want to vulture somebody who's dying. But anyway, Marverni is now completely dead. Yis is attacking them again. They had made a brief peace treaty while Abyssia ate Marverni. So now Abyssia is kind of big. Ubar is kind of big. TNG is getting attacked by Yis now as well. Um, they're also getting attacked by Ubar. Ubar kind of, I think, we should attack. Um, but the timing is going to be important. But um, he's kind of been Yis's ally. And I actually am getting to the point where I have the tools to fight Ubar. The pro I have to have a way to deal. It's kind of the same thing that I hate dealing with with human nations. Like, we don't have magic weapons, and we don't have a way to deal with Wrathful Skies. These are pretty big problems. Uh, we can get out, a lot of, get out of a lot of this by having vampires. But until we do, uh, that's a problem. But... Anyway, so there's this whole thing going on where there's a bunch of... This is basically a balkanized planet. Like, a bunch of small states, no superpowers. It's a problem. And Yis is just going to 
he's going crazy eating Asaloon. So what we have done is it's ridiculous of the large powers, the people who are actually like comparable with Yes in terms of economy and research. Like if you don't have the research that Yes does, you're not even going to be able to fight them. Like the, we're not even talking. I'm not, I mean, we're trying to help these guys organize a little bit, or I am, but it, a lot of this is not very meaningful. Like these guys, the whole planet couldn't fight Yes now, right? And so for the big planet, for the big powers, to be like, oh, you guys just need to group up and fight them, which is what I was just saying for like five minutes. It's you're like, sure they do, but they've kind of waited too long and it's insufficient now. So uh, what are we going to do? Well, I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll get back to you next episode. But we finally have like made a like a thread where we can all talk to each other. And, like, we're going to have to cooperate, like, Marver, uh, Marignan's going to need to give a start to Ur. Ur is going to need to attack. Ur also owns some land over here. We were talking about this. But every most everybody, not Atlantis, goddamn middle-aged Atlantis, uh, w there's one, there's a thing that, uh, that exists in Dominions, and it's called being the whip of the coalition. So we're making a coalition kind of formally against Dias, and... The whip is a position where you basically, oftentimes it'll be somebody who like doesn't have a border, but they have a credible threat of attacking whoever backs out of the coalition. Um, so anyway, that's a thing. But Middle Age Atlantis hasn't commented in that thread, and I may remove him from it because I don't know if he's going to participate. He still is busy fighting the dragons. Uh, he's also a good friend. The problem is the. Uh, Ur, who's right over here, and Atlantis are very good friends with Yis. So, I don't know. Things could leak back. Things will certainly leak back to him. I don't care. We have to stop him. But anyway, the, the philosophical part is this. Like, this game has been pretty interesting because what's different in this game than in many other games is it's so big that most of the people that you're... Go it's kind of like the difference between being in a small town and being in a big city. Like, most of the people on the map, you're not neighbors with. So, because of that, um, trading's a lot different. Like, people are willing to trade item boosters and stuff. People are willing to trade generally a lot more because um, they're not worried about you getting stronger and overtaking them. Uh, the other thing is... There's just so many nations that it really did go through this like city-state formation where basically you have to eat quite a few players just to be relevant. And if you don't do that, then you're like a small, tiny city-state waiting to get eaten. And that's kind of what this whole planet is over here. Um, down here, it's not so bad. We've got Jotunheim, who's kind of in that position, but everybody else has now carved out a decent amount of territory for themselves, including Vanheim. Uh, but yeah, you kind of get to that phase, and then we get this really kind of interesting thing where there's like a superpower, and nobody wants to mess with the superpower uh, while, like, you know, alone, basically. So, and... Because the problem is you you can like be in position two, yes throws all of his all of his weight at you and you get knocked down to like position five. And the only way we're gonna be confident is if we all attack him on the same turn. So we'll we'll have to see. But um one thing I could start doing is flames from the skying some of his troops. Like there's a fair amount here. We could hit some of these. You can see Divine Mummies, he's been doing um, God, he's got a ton of dudes flying around. He's been doing uh, Vessel of Misery, which is a stupid spell. But uh, anyway, we'll do that. We're going to do that next spring. Early spring is when you cast it. Uh, unfortunately, all of our dudes are going to be able to do it, or all of these guys, which we've got. So far, two, and this turn we're summoning another Aerox, so that'll be three. And we might, by the time spring comes around, be able to have four. Yeah, we should be able to have four. Um, and so anyway, we can potentially do... 
forget how much it costs. 40. So if we have 160 gems, we can do four. Which seems a little broken to me, but I guess we'll do it. Uh, okay. So that's that. Um, we had some battles this turn. Uh, we had a battle here inside the fort. I don't even think he put gems on these guys. Oh my god, it's a water fort too. He could have made a lot of water elementals at that one. Yeah, these guys look like they're off script. I think Atlantis has given up, guys. Fuck Atlantis. So we took this fort. Um, it's got a lab in it, which is actually really nice, because I was potentially going to have to build a lab. Um, so we're going to be heading south. He had an army here. It was moving southward, and it looks like it joined up over here. Um, he's got fish monsters, mages of the deep, coral guard. We'll have to see. Anyway, this guy's gonna come here, uh, just walk in and uh, hopefully kill everything. We sent him magic phase in first uh, to clear this province out. Monster fish we have to be a little careful about. I might move in large up to be earlier in the script. Because he could get killed by a monster fish. Yeah. It gives zero shits about PD. And that was a, like a PD dump. That was one of the reasons I moved him in magic phase. Was so that my army wouldn't have to, to bump into it. Um, we are actually going to move this further up in the script. Um, I think we're going to do it here. Enlarge Soul Vortex and um, Temper Flesh. And that this will be good if, I don't know, the monster fish run at us. And so we'll take this. Um, I had basically had talked to the Atlantis player and was like, yo, dude. I think I, maybe I can figure what I told you last episode, but yo, dude, we can, um, I can probably get the land nations to make peace with you. And he was like, yeah, I want to die. So we have complete, this is guys, I want you to understand the, like what this means. First of all, there's a lot of things. Like some of you were probably saying like, oh, you shouldn't fight Atlantis. You know, like, what are you doing? It's not going to be worth it. Like, we had to. First of all, it was a necessity. If we... It could have been we lost. And if we lost that, then it would be really bad. Because we would have... Imagine little frog cities all around our capital. Fuck no. We had to. But I was also pretty confident we could, because the reason we... We did this at the right time, and that's one of the things that's really important. He was messing around with Rotterland. That was not done. Oceania wasn't finished. Jotunheim he was messing around with. He's basically been messing around with everybody. He had this idea that, like, that, like, I wasn't very good at this game, and that he would be able to, like, medium commitment, just walk through here and take my shit. And that's not the case. I'm not a noob. I do like that about DE a little bit, is some of these things like the Sea King Goblet, I do, I like the water changes, I'll just put it that way. I like the water changes. That you can actually go underwater now, and like we were able to successfully execute an underwater war. We were severely handicapped, you know, like we're not nearly as good underwater as we would be on land. Um, which is something I think is good. Like that, it's good that it feels that way. If it if it didn't feel that way, then things would be too cheap. So we felt really handicapped, and he didn't want to come on land. So it felt good. It still felt like thematic, but we've walloped him. We've walloped him. He's just bit off more than he can chew. Rotterland had an amazing hold. We've been bane venom charming the shit out of. We have look, guys. We've been bane bane venom charming. We've been pillaging so that even if he wants to get it back, he can't. 
Like, we have literally broken his morale. Like, let that sink in. We're a land nation, and we made the underwater nation want to give up. He said, this is no fair. I... This is this is the most broken map ever for underwater. Everything is coastal. There's a huge amount of water on it. Guys, do you realize what we have done? Do you do you actually realize? Uh, okay. We're moving these guys over here. There's a chance he moves a bunch of water elemental mages in here. We get crapped upon. Uh, but given he didn't even bother to script the mages in here, we are going to march forward to victory. We're sending this guy back in with this little guy to bless him. The idea is I put armor on this dude now. Actually, I didn't want to put the boots on, but I had to. Because he wouldn't have made it. And, um... Yeah, he's gonna go fluff. But with the armor and the twist fate and stuff, hopefully he doesn't die in combat. Hopefully. Because he now is gonna have a significantly higher base protection. Anyway. Um, we have word from Rotterland that he is moving on top of Oceania this, this turn, which is excellent. Um, we are making him a bunch more Octothug gear. Uh, Girdles of Might, uh, Blades of Cold Iron. Well, that's for me, a Lightless Lantern. Um, making a Blade of Cold Iron for Kalasa too. A Skultata Volturnus, I believe, somewhere, if I could figure out where. I probably should make another Skultata Volturnus. Let me see if I've actually got another one. I kind of need to make more hammers, too, but we're saving up our earth for another magical mine. I think these things are totally worth it. So we'll get one of those as soon as we can. Uh, I didn't go through the events. But I guess we'll finish talking about the thug thing. So I'm making he's making two more Octo Thugs, and uh, he's going to unleash them running around down here. He's got a lot of dudes on top of his capital, which is nice. I wonder, Kalen probably could knock him off if he chose to. So we'll see. Um, Kalen had knocked me off here. We've put guys back on. There was no fight. And we've got a bunch of idiots coming back on top. Most of these guys are mercenaries. We got attacked by barbs here. Um, we're going to send a vampire in to clear them out. As one does. This province, we got attacked by independence three times. Once, twice, and three times. And then we found a Caitlyn Scout. So anyway, rip wolves. But I think there's a fertility cult here. Um, we, pro I th we, we did patrol her out. I think that's the Dryad Mother. Wait, let me see. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know if this is permanently deleted yet. We've got two fertility cults that I think that are ongoing. There's one here. Oh. Wait, when, when did this thing pop up? The leader is... Okay, we'll grow late summer. So that was a while ago. I probably already killed these guys. Anyway... Um, yeah, okay, so we've, we're moving troops in here, we're going to finish this off from Kalem. We had said we're going to war with the Vikings, and I think we're still going to do that. Um, importantly, our blood economy is going. Uh, if you were to sit here and be extremely, uh, you know have little respect for your own time, you would sum up all these numbers and notice that it's right around 250. And so anyway, our blood economy is growing rather rapidly. Um, next turn, we might be close to 300. And that will be pretty good. Unfortunately, we cast this turn flames from the sky. And I don't understand this. Um, we cast flames from the sky right over here which is exactly where Micklin ordered us. And he said there's a big human army. And I told him, dude, the way that, because he, he's not super experienced with the game. I was like, dude, the way this spell works is if we hit a big human army, it'll kill about half of it, unless it's like well-armored stuff where it has fire resistance. And he's like, no, it's mostly crossbowmen and some 
guardians of or some of his sacreds. The thing is, is that um, I can find it. So it should be these guys who have nine protection. These guys should absolutely get blown up by flames from the sky. Like it should be killing about 40% of them per volley. And then they've, he's got what Royal guard or palace guard. These guys will be a little closer, right? Cause these guys it's AP damage. It's going to treat as seven protection and it does 14 damage or 15. So yeah, this one, it's probably not going to kill most of them. This one it will probably kill like 10% of them. Every time we cast it is what I was thinking. But somehow we only killed 14, so I don't know what, what happened there. Um, I've asked him if he wants me to cast it again, but it was extremely ineffective. We killed 14 dudes. Don't know what's going on. Um, oh, we also have Salamariah now. I just like completely skipped over that. So this is Salamariah. We have renamed him to Matheson. And Matheson, of course, is, you know, one of the characters in Pineapple Express. Uh, he's he's kind of like the 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 more hardened of the two criminals. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, he's a funny ass dude. But uh, yeah, so Matheson, we are going to empower him in death. So it's minus 50 death gems. The reason is I can then twice born him. We'll put the gem of creation on him. Drop a twice borning. And um, yeah, after that, we will send him off into the lake. And we're going to have one of them twice born now. I do want to do the trick, but I'm going to have to be a lot higher in thaumaturgy where we can do music of the spheres on him and then twice born him. And then we're going to have a permanent innate caster, Astral 5 dude, which will be extraordinarily useful with a bunch of stealthy Astral mages. I can do horrible, horrible, horrible things with that. So, um, I mean, that's like, I think it's one of the things, I think it's like when you're looking at different options and different things to do, there's a lot of things that like seem cool. They're like pretty and like art, the artifact forging is an interesting example of this. Cause it's like, Oh, it's cool. The question you have to ask yourself is like, could this be instrumental in me winning the game? And for most of the artifacts, the answer is no, but for like having one of these guys, that's um, an innate caster, like an astral five air three nature, three death, one innate caster, like on a Tartarian chassis, like could that win you the game? Yeah, that, that could definitely fucking win you the game, right? Because you can do super strong master and slaves. I mean, you can do crazy strong stuff with that. So anyway, uh, pretty stoked we're getting him. We're get, we're not going to mass produce this guy. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make one, then we're probably going to use Solomaria a few places, and then we'll probably make another one um, once I get Thaum 8. Uh, but it's just, it's not going to be, it's going to be prohibitively expensive, right? Each of these guys are going to cost 80 death gems, which they're kind of worth, but I, we want to get off a bunch of vessels of misery and stuff too. Our death income is crazy. So anyway, we need to do that. But we've got Matheson now. We uh, Ted Jones is about to YOLO in over here. And he's going to clear this PD. And then we're probably going to go sit on top of this fort. I'm also making a manual of water breathing. And we're going to go send these idiots on top of this fort. Um, and my idea is we'll probably have like this coast and maybe this stuff. And Rotterland can go here and then come down here and conquer all of this shit. Um, Alcara has now declared... Once Atlantis told me they were done, I shared that with everybody else. Because we're on the clock. We have to eat Atlantis. Uh, old Atlantis. And I need to put light fire into these guys' asses. We need to eat Old Atlantis before Middle Atlantis comes here and eats all this shit. And... Like, Rotterland getting ready to move in is excellent. That's exactly what we need to have happen. 
So anyway, this is kind of all going according to plan. Uh, we've got somebody coming over here to build a lab. He is not, and I'm, now that he's moving on top of his capital with a lot of guys, he is not going to want me to have this throne. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't know that I won't give it to him because I told him I would. So I think I will, but I really need this throne. Like I need, these gnomes are going to be so clutch to me. Because they can do elemental form, which is a kind of broken-ass spell. So, yeah. We're going to probably be needing that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> the throne, it's right here. We want it. We're get, moving a guy in to build a lab, and we'll stone construction it. I probably need to go ahead and bring it up with him and be like, okay... Uh, I know I've safe keep the, or been safe keeping this, but I actually really need it to fight yes. And if he says yes, that will be great. And then I'm going to have no reason to fight him for a good long time. He can go down here, conquer Atlantis. He and Alcara can fight. He and Kirby can fight. He can fight whoever. He can fight me later if he wants to. I don't care. Um, anyway, that's what's happening on down here. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Most of this is just really getting our blood economy going right now. Let's talk about our blood stuff. So um, we're empowering in blood, which is a little wasteful, guys, because I need to be able to get hell power off. And we're putting... Um, how to say this? We're, we're spending a lot to get our god to be optimal for... Uh, like completely wiping stacks that have he has no business wiping like we've made the crown for him now that is available and this turn we're going to be making the amulet of power uh which is this thing and this is going to be extremely good halt heretic versus non-berserkers oh so good not super great against vanheim but it'll be good against Vanheim Thugs, right? Because the Vanheim Thugs are mounted units, so they're not going to be able to berserk. So it's going to be good there. The magic resistance is always nice. And the penetration bonus is what's going to be absolutely nuts. It's going to make our little crown of overmind thing just completely broken. Uh, and it's going to make Soul Vortex and Astral Shield a lot better. It's basically going to be amazing, is what it's going to be. Um... So anyway, because of that, to do, we'll talk a little bit about hell power real quick. To get hell power off, it's you have to be blood three to cast it, and it's going to cost you three hundred fatigue. If you're blood four, uh, it's a lot better. It cuts it in half, so it makes it um, one fifty. And if you use four blood slaves, it's as if you were five, which. Uh, is going to put it right at 100 fatigue. So if you're in drain, you'll still fatigue out. You really, to cast Hell Power, guys, to cast, and if you're not part of a communion, to cast Hell Power, you really want to be Blood 5. This is what I discovered through trial and error instead of through very simple math when I was playing uh, Hinnom. So yeah, Blood 5 is kind of the magic number. So we're probably going to empower him up to Blood 5. It's a little wasteful. I mean, it's very wasteful. But, uh, I don't know, it's good too. And we're probably going to have to empower him in Earth, but we're going to do that after we do our mine. So anyway, we've got that going on. Importantly, we're casting Malediction. Um, last episode, we went through the thing where we looked at Malediction, and now we get to actually cast it. So how much should we put in it? Well, we've got a lot of Blood Slaves. Uh, we, the base cost here is 147. And if we go to 247, that would be 100 overcast. The thing with 100 overcast, though, is it only counts as 50 for the purposes of bumping with other globals because we're using blood slaves, which count half, half as much. So if we go to 347, now it's as if we actually put 100 in it. And then if we do, like, 20 more, like... Let's do 77. Um, 
this if somebody somebody would have to do a hundred overcast which is kind of a lot for this point in the game <sighs> and maybe if we do it we do it you know we do it like like this much that way somebody would have to really drop a strong overcasting anyway i think we do that it's a lot but it's gonna hold it up for a long time hopefully um i mean the other option and maybe it's better is we don't do that right now. Like we just do a minimum casting and then if it gets knocked out, we do like a super powerful casting. And maybe better than like, cause in some ways we're doing like a middle of the road casting. Yeah, it's hard to say. It's hard to say boys. Um, but anyway, we're putting that up. For better or for worse, we're casting Curse of Blood, and we're casting Curse of Vampirism. So we're casting Curse of Vampirism over here at Orman, which is going to be our launching point for attacking Vanheim, which we're still planning on doing. Um, I need to probably get... Yeah, we're going to probably need major reinforcements over here. I think all my moons are recruiting. But yeah, we're we're probably we haven't organized yet which place we're gonna attack, but I've got it it kind of sucks because I'm preparing to attack Vanheim. At the same time I'm preparing to attack the moon. We also got a battle report posted to the public chat by Relay where he killed a bunch of like 70 Van Heers, which is of course what we like to see. So we're probably going to take that. And very shortly, well, we're going to need, like, at least 50 vampires. Probably 100. Which would probably be, like, four or five turns. Um, and not, like, the big vampire lords. Like, we need baby vampires. To go over here and yoink Arco. So we're going to go do that. Um, but anyway, it's it's very nice that uh, that Relay has killed some Van Heers for us. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. So we're casting Curse of Blood. The way to think about it, the Vampire Lords are going to be our factories. And the, um, wait, that's a Vampire Lord. This is, an, oh, this is a Vampire Lord too. Okay, yeah, so we've got two Vampire Lords. So one is casting Sir, uh, Curse of Blood to self-replicate. Uh, the other is casting Curse of Vampirism. So next turn, I could potentially cast Curse of Vampirism three times. Uh, which would be good. I may also empower again next turn. I'm not totally sure. Because, um, again, blood four isn't quite enough. We need to be blood five. Uh, we also need to think about what is the last... Uh, like, what are, what are the other artifacts we want to make? And I'm not completely sure. Uh, on one hand, it may need to be something with shock resistance, but anyway, we're not going to bother you with that now. Uh, the art, the artifact that comes after Amulet of Power. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I think that is about it. Uh, research priorities, we are going to hit Alt-7, not this turn, but turn after. Uh, then we're going to make a brief parlay down to Evocation 7 so we can do Mind Hunting. Um, this will be nice maybe for killing some... Uh, like, this is going to be a ton of assassins and stuff. So just being able to pummel a province with Mind Hunt will be really good. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to head to Blood 8, maybe, to get uh, Blood Vortex. Um, and that will be kind of nice. Um, yeah... That one we actually won't cast in our blood discount site. We'll actually cast that in Sawaki. And we're you can see we're blood hunting really hard all around Sawaki. So I think what we'll do is when we get close to this, like once Evocation 6 is done, which actually is only like th three turns away, we'll make a call whether we go for Thaumaturgy first or for Blood 8. If I don't have these under... I think we're probably going to go... We'll go ahead and change it here. We're probably going to go Thaumaturgy first because... I don't think I'll have these down under 6k population by then. Like, we're going to blood hunt them into the absolute ground. 
Oh, we've got a record of creation here. I probably should also just give these guys some blood slaves and have them summon imps in case we get attacked. Do that here. A little bit of micro you can watch. But I probably need to give this guy some gems in case we get assassinated or who knows what happens. We'll do... Excellent. No killing him. Is this guy, we're doing record of creation in this province. If we were being really clever, and once we have Blood 8, we can also set it up. We can have these things all set up to do life for life in case elves come. So there's a pretty decent argument for Blood 8. But for now, we're just going to stick with imps. You can also do leech spam, which is probably better. Anyway, we're doing record of creation here. We're doing stone construction here. Um, and I'm building a lab here so that next turn we can do stone construction here. Um, so that will be nice. You know, one thing we may do for our next item, uh, it may be that we do um, the instant laboratory. Is it? Maybe it's Earth Astral, yeah. This thing? God, it's expensive, though. But this will save me a bit of money on fording up. I don't know if it's worth it. It's probably worth it. Because this also allows for some crazy strategic plays. Um, like, I can basically have a guy moving in stealth, and wherever he goes, a lab is going to pop up if I own it. So, that's kind of cool. I think it works like that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, boys. Uh, we've covered the happenings of this turn. Um, we've got to decide when we pull the trigger into Vanheim. That's kind of the big thing. And then we're going to, I don't, like, I'm not prepared exactly to go attack Yes, but we're going to just go fuck with Yes, And he's going to come back and fuck with us. And that's fine. It's going to cost us stuff. It's not going to, what are these guys doing here? Well, we'll also tear magic beings apart like that. Like, especially that's the other thing about running evocation, is we're also going to get access to Iron Blizzard, which certain types of things like elementals we will absolutely shred. Um, other things like Ether Lords, those are magic beings. We'll shred those to pieces with that. Uh huh. Uh, anyway, that is it, boys. Uh, we are winning the war against Atlantis. Um, hopefully Rotterland puts all his effort into coming down here and lets me have this throne. And yeah, we will see you all next time.